This here, we have a nice filet of snapper. I was down at the Italian market earlier today. Why snapper? Picked out snapper is probably the easiest fish. Most people would turn to salmon. Mm -hmm. Fuck salmon. Salmon's too oily and greasy for me. I can't eat that shit. Snapper is very simple. Snapper, the preparation is super minimal and you don't gotta do a whole lot. So you have your filet. Mm -hmm. First thing you wanna do after you get your filet, if you got this from the, the local fish mart, is you wanna make sure there's no pin bones in it. You wanna touch oh, that, yeah, you see you got like that. three or four pin bones right there. If you have a tweezers, you can use a tweezers. If not, you just wanna get a piece of, piece of paper like that and try and them out without yeah try and get a fucking good grip on them if you can't get yeah there we go oh wow look at that bad boy like now you have your filet of fish it's good now we're gonna trim it up a little bit we want two equal size pieces um <clears throat> most of the time you also want to check this descaled these are no scales on here here's one scale so that's okay. what they look like so they're like uh those like they're, they're little flex like you can't tell if you bite one you're like not gonna bite through yeah yeah exactly so pardon me you want two equal pieces. So that one, and then we'll trim this one up and throw off the side. Now, we're gonna sear these. We want this side to be crispy, because that's like the best part of this fish is the yeah, texture. Crispy. Jesus Christ with the pin bones. So in order to keep this nice, when you, when you hit this on a high heat, it's gonna shrivel up. So you wanna score it so it doesn't shrivel up completely and like bend in like a, you know, like a, a, a rainbow. So it'll, it'll bend on the it'll, scores, it'll basically? It'll bow, yeah. It'll, it'll really, by putting the scores in there, you're releasing that tension, so it won't. It'll stay flat, mm -hmm. which you want, because you want a nice, crispy skin. So you want to find some nice spots. You don't want to go that far in, you know? Mm -hmm. Now to this, we just want to season salt and pepper. Pinch. To accompany this, we're going to have a saute of wild mushrooms. So for the mushrooms, you don't really need to do a lot of prep. Yeah, just pull it out there. You just want to pull the caps off and you're, you know, shiitakes. Yeah, go for it. Shiitakes, you're going to, you know, you tear them out. With the oyster mushrooms, they have this big knot at the bottom, the root. So we're going to cut that out. And if you lose some of the mushroom, it's not that big a deal. You have a ton more to go here. You have a lot. And <clears throat> with mushrooms, you just, you don't need to cut them. You just rip them up into pieces. You know, really easy. So if you want to rip these up into like Absolutely. quarters, fifths, sixths, whatever, you know, whatever you feel like. We want everything to be the same size so when we cook it, everything cooks evenly. And we actually wanna start these before we start the fish because the fish is so thin and delicate. <clears throat> the only thing we're really gonna cook is we're gonna cook that skin side down. Mm -hmm. If you don't like fish skin, you can take it off, but you're fucking ruining it at that point. That's like you want texture, like fish is soft and flaky. The skin is a nice crunch. And when you sear fish, don't ever use butter because butter is not going to make a nice crispy skin. It's going to it's going to it's going to steam it because like I was explaining to Luke earlier. With the, with butter the, the butter has moisture. has water in it. So unless you clarify your butter, you're going to have a soggy skin. So with this we're going to use generic oil. I think here we have some peanut oil. For the uh, mushrooms, we're going to use olive oil because we don't need to sear anything. So you have your pan smoking hot. You want a hot pan for the for your for your mushrooms because you want a hard sear. So we got oil, put a little more and we're gonna come over. Yep, we'll come over. Take these. Uh, take these fun guys. We get the, the last little stragglers, and we'll go in with them. So to this, while it's going, we're gonna add a tablespoon of butter. Accurate, you know. Accurate amount. Break that up. And we're gonna take some of this garlic. Probably take a half a teaspoon. You know, just like that. Take some white wine and Chardonnay. Come off the pan. Add about a quarter cup. Throw them back on there and let them cook down. You can turn the you can turn this down to about medium. And you just want to cook those down until that extra that wine is just evaporated into like a syrup almost. Now we have our oiled our non-oiled pan over here. You want to use <clears throat> you don't want to use olive oil. Why not? Olive oil burns when you get hot. So you want a hot ass pan so you can sear that crust okay. on the skin. So that's why it's only gonna be in for a couple minutes. Exactly. A couple seconds, not yeah. Good. You don't want to use so olive oil for sauteing vegetables is fine. It adds that extra flavor to it. It's not that big a deal. But when you're going for a sear, <clears throat> you want peanut oil or canola oil. So when you go to add your fish, rule of thumb is you don't want to burn yourself. So in order to do that, you stand directly in front of the pan and you lay whatever you're putting in away from you. So if it splashes, it splashes that way, not this way. Makes sense. So, 
That's what, you, that's what you want to hear. Ooh. So, in order to maintain the crispy skin in the restaurant, what we would do is we would take a, a small pan like this, spray the bottom of it, and put it right on top. So that way it's pressing even, down. Even pressure. You press it down and you get it. So if you don't have that, then you just take your, you know, generic wooden spatula and just, you know, push it down. If you were to, like, add a grain to this, what, what do you think would be the best? <clears throat> brown rice, probably. Brown rice would be solid. I think brown rice, uh, there's a, a hip hop artist I'm a big fan of who in his line he uses brown rice under anything from out the ocean. <laughs> and I just live by that. Mayhem okay. Loren, Mayhem Loren, check him out, he's nice. So you can notice the color change around here, like this up top here, yeah. it's still raw. But barely. But barely, so we're gonna turn this off, we're gonna flip these over and let them sit. We're gonna plate the mushrooms, then we're gonna come back with this, and that's yeah, just gonna be it. You see the white coming up and it's like all the way almost yep. to the top. So we're gonna turn this off, If I had a ring mold, it would be a lot nicer, but you know, you work with what you got here. So let's go on top with this. Oh yeah, hide the messed up piece. Yeah, you Beautiful. always do it. That's culinary 101. Now, we don't have a sauce for this, so we're gonna make a quick sauce. Quarter cup of wine. Turn the heat up. I got this little bit of saffron here. Not everybody has this, but I'm fortunate enough to have some of the saffron. This is from Spain too, this is that, that good shit. Why don't people have saffron, it's just expensive? I mean, it's expensive and also the average American doesn't even know what the fuck saffron is. Yeah, so we took a quarter cup of wine, we reduced it down to about a tablespoon of liquid. Now, you wanna take that off the heat, come over here, we have three tablespoons of butter. Oh, damn. Now, you wanna cool this down a little bit. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna emulsify. So, you can't have this smoking hot or else, the, like I said, this has water in it. So as soon as you add that to this, if you're not emulsifying, it's gonna fucking separate. So we're gonna take one of these. Normally you just do it one at a time. And this technique, we call this Bermonte. Constantly stir, constantly stir, constantly stir. And when I get done jumbling this around, you're gonna see what we have. It is beautiful, silky smooth sauce. So here we have it. Very simple, honestly. It, oh, didn't, yeah. it didn't really take that long. That was what, the, only, minutes, the only thing that took minutes, the only thing that really took that long was the the, the butter sauce. Mm -hmm. But that you can have working at the same time. But it's easier to do at the end because it's such a quick sauce. We had a nice fillet of, of, of red snapper. We made sure it was safe to eat. No pin bones, none of that bullshit. We got the crust on it beautifully, fucking beautifully and perfect. And then we just finished it off with that nice saffron beurre blanc. And it was very simple, very easy, really. Now there's, you know, one thing left to do is just taste it, see what happens. I like the softness of the fish with it. Oh, you're not getting the texture of that mushroom in there? I don't eat mushrooms, I like homie. The, I like the mix, the mix up. If they don't hallucinate, they don't go in my body. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It was, it was actual privilege having homeboy on. He was a great guest, Always, a great man. sous chef. Don't read into the hype. TV is bullshit, dog. <laughs> Leave the man alone, you know what I mean? He's a good dude. Then you can cook. Say what I mean? He's good in my eyes. Where's the easiest way for people to ask questions to you? You can hit me up on, for food, yeah, I'm very knowledgeable, I think. <laughs> you can hit me up on Instagram at <clears throat> phillydoughboy215. Again, if you have questions, concerns, hit me up personally, I'll answer them for you. But thank you for sticking around. Have a good night.